Hello everyone, welcome to the GIS Specials. So in this video we are going to be learning PostGIS and as the title of the video suggests, we are going to be learning PostGIS baby steps. Now this simply means we are going to make this process as smooth and as simple as possible. So by now you should probably grab a notebook where you'll jot down some of the points you'll pick along the way. It is expected by the end of this tutorial, you'll have grown into an adult PostGIS uh, guru able to conquer any post gis operations that come your way so let's dive in the most important thing to know is what a spatial database is and it's simply a database that is able to store and manipulate spatial objects and it has three aspects it has the spatial data types which can either be points lines or polygons it also has spatial indexing which is used for easy and fast retrieval um, of spatial operations and then you have the spatial functions which are used for querying properties and relationships now this is a diagram that shows the hierarchy of uh, geometry of these data types and as you can see it is broken down into point curve surface and geometry collection now the curve is further broken down into a line string and the surface is also broken down into a polygon now a point represents a location which can be a 2D, 3D or even a 4D uh, kind of feature. A line represents a path and it's a connection between two or more points while a polygon represents an area uh, whereby the starting point will be the ending point. So we also have the geometry collection which is broken down into multi-point, multi-curve, and multi-surface. And in a geometry collection, we can have both a multi-point and a multi-curve. We can have a collection of these features. So these special data types are organized in a hierarchy whereby the subtype is able to inherit the attributes and the behaviors of the supertype. Now, special indexes are access methods and they are able to allow fast and random access of spatial data so for example you want to determine objects that fall within a particular bounding box you are able to write a query that will in turn be used by PostGIS to access um, these kind of objects that fulfill this condition now for fast and random access of this you need spatial indexes and PostGIS uses the R3 spatial index to um, access this kind of random data. A bounding box is, as shown, the smallest rectangle that is able to contain a feature and it should be parallel to the coordinate axis. Spatial functions, uh, they enable analyzing geometric components and also determining spatial relationships and manipulating geometries. And these functions are written so that you can be able to either convert the uh, geometries or the data formats to manage information about spatial tables to retrieve properties and measurements also to compare two geometries with respect to their spatial relation and this involves their topology and finally you can generate new geometries from other geometries so having understood uh, the aspects of a spatial database, it would be nice to understand what PostGIS is. And this is the elephant in the room, <laughs> no pun intended. So PostGIS is, some say it's a spatial database, others say it's a, an extension that gives PostGIS uh, spatial functionalities. But um, what I believe is PostGIS is able to turn PostgreSQL into a spatial database by giving it support for the three features that you had mentioned, spatial types, indexes, and functions. And PostgreSQL is a powerful object relational database management system. So if I can remember from my uh, database management class 101, uh, a relational database had various characteristics. And the main thing is that it is viewed as a 2D kind of database 
where we have the rows and the columns. And a row represents an entity, while a column represents an attribute. So the intersection of rows and columns is where you find the event that has occurred. Now, in a relational database, we have a primary key, which uniquely identifies each row, and we have a foreign key, which is an attribute that is um, connected to another, the, another table from its primary key. Now, in a, a relational database, we also have um, relationships, and this can be one to many, many to many or one to one relationships. So let me give you a short story on PostGIS. In May 2001, the first version of PostGIS was released. This was PostGIS 0.1. It had objects, uh, indexes, and a handful of functions. This resulted in a database suitable for storage and retrieval, but not for analysis. As the number of these functions increased, PostGIS needed some sense of organization and order. The simple features for SQL provided this structure with guidelines for functioning, naming, and requirements. Now, when PostGIS was able to support simple analysis and spatial joints, MapServer became the first external application to provide visualization of the data in the database. Now, a second project came along, GEOS, which in full means Geometry Engine Open Source, and it provided algorithms for implementing simple features for SQL specifications, and this was by version 0.8 of PostGIS. However, another issue arose. As PostGIS data grew, the representation used to show geometry became inefficient. Now, metadata header and uh, the required dimensions were shrunk, making PostGIS 1.0 faster and more lightweight. Recent updates have improved performance, thus PostGIS 1.4 speed in geometry testing routines increased. Now, enough with all this talk, let's get our hands dirty with PostGIS in the next video. And guys, if these tutorials are helpful to you in any way, Consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to give this video a like. Bye.